Who is, where is our next presenter? Well, I thought it might be you, but I, I didn't want to make any assumptions. I want to apologize to Ivo. I, we spent about half an hour practicing, I practicing my Dutch, au, au. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Mr. Sandhaus. Which one? First one. Our next presenter is uh, Raphael Laporte, I can pronounce that one, uh, to talk with us about uh, uh, coming from us, to us, excuse me, from uh, the National F Library of France, uh, to talk about uh, data.bnf.fr as a sandbox for ferberization, in particular automated work creation, which sounds quite fascinating. So, welcome. Oh, so, hello everybody, I'm uh, Raphael Lapotre. Um, I work at the National Library of France as a product owner for the databnf.fr website. Uh, this uh, website, we actually, um, someone told uh, about it this morning, uh, the person from the OCLC. <laughs> uh, it mentions it, hi, <laughs> mentioned, mentioned it as a, a, an old and well established project in LOD. Um, and so uh, I'm uh, going to uh, uh, describe you a little bit uh, the project and the process of uh, fabrication at the BNF, so the National Library of France. Um, so um, this project relies on named entities. Uh, the principle is to dedicate each entities um, a web page on which we aggregate content from uh, the several applications of the library. Um, so uh, we have entities such as uh, date, concepts, which are teams from our uh, Rameau, uh, um, Rameau uh, team. Uh, so so uh, it's a, a seed of risk that we uh, manage at the BNF Rameau. Uh, we have uh, places. Uh, authors and finally we have works and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you specifically about works today because um, we've been trying to uh, create those uh, work entities when they wouldn't exist for bibliographic records at the library and we have uh, trying to we, we are trying to do that automatically with algorithms um, so these slides look like a, a pentagram. It's uh, kind of a esoteric stuff. I wanted to show you uh, one of our medieval grimoire at the BNF where we have kind of esoteric stuff and I left it, but my boss said no. So <laughs> there is a slide. Um, so more about those entities. Um, as I told you, the named entities are shared across our uh, several applications at the BNF. So, uh, mainly, uh, source records are coming from the Catalogue Général, so it is the main catalogue of the BNF. Uh, there's also links towards uh, our digital library, Gallica, and some links towards archives and manuscripts uh, catalogue. And uh, what's interesting is that on the web page, uh, you can find links toward um, uh, Library of Congress, uh, Wikidata, DBpedia, and VIAF projects. So they, these are um, links toward equivalent uh, entities into those uh, LOD projects. So um, what I found interesting in that project is that um, uh, it's, um, it's a web project and an LOD project. So it combines two faces uh, for each entities. You have HTML page and RDF data uh, behind the same URL. I'm talking about a URL, not a URI here. Um, so let's look at a work in the, in the BNF, data BNF. So here um, is a page for a work. Um, here it's uh, the Niflunga Saga. Uh, I choose this, uh, uh, this work. Um, you can find uh, information, metadata about the work. At the beginning of the page, you can find language, title, date, 
uh, eventually an author, he is anonymous. Uh, and below you can find edition of the work. Uh, and the principle that's uh, on this uh, web page, you have uh, the title for the work and the set of editions corresponding to the work in the library. Um, and now, if you just add a um, suffix to the URL, such as rdf.nt or rdf.xml, you can get the data for the work. And here you can see um, properties such as uh, DC terms description, DC terms titles, uh, SCOS pref label, and um, links to what editions with an RDA property like RDA relationship work manifested, uh, the links to what editions of the work. So um, coming back to that uh, double face of uh, data.bnf.a4, um, what is interesting that um, in, the, in the web you have um, one title and a URL, and if you click on that title, it's a handle for a set of editions uh, in the library. And if you take our Sparkle endpoint, uh, you have one URI, you enter the URI in the Sparkle endpoint, and you have a set of properties. And uh, so the principle of the, the website is to generate both um, aggregations of books and documents around entities from one side, and aggregations of properties from one URI on the other side, and each communicates. And that's how, um, I, I'm, um, I'm insisting on that because that's how we processed for automatizing creation of work. And uh, I'm going to explain this to you further. So what I call uh, all works at the BNF um, are the, um, the work that existed, actually are manually created for indexing needs. Uh, they've been created when there was a study about the work. So that means that for every bibliographic record uh, describing an, an edition of a work at the BNF, there's no, uh, a work entry point. There's no, a, not a work entry, a work entity existing for those editions. Uh, so works are not systematic in the BNF because they've been uh, created uh, manually. Uh, and we couldn't uh, do that for every kind of editions at the, work, at the BNF because the BNF is um, a legal deposit institution, so we receive every kind of editions published in France, and with only 15% to create those work, it wouldn't be possible to do that for all uh, the editions and bibliographic records describing editions at the BNF. Um, but what is um, specificity of those handcrafted uh, artifacts, these old works, is that uh, they go through a work, um, validation workflow, a validation process. They are several times checked, and you can see that in this intermark zone, the zero, 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 in the ninth position, there is an indicator of validity. A zero is for a complete validated work, and we have sometimes non-validated work. Uh, but they're not uh, disseminated in the interface of data.bnf.fr because they're not validated. Um, so main, mainly no, our work are coming from the main catalog. But now we want a work for each bibliographic records uh, in the data.bnf.fr project and in the main catalog. So where to start? That's a big problem. So first of all, we decided that we needed a homogeneous copy of document because um, if you've been working in a library with special collections, you know that some cataloging rules apply to a certain kind of documents and some catalog cataloging rules other than the first one applies to another corpus. So if we decide to base our algorithm on those cataloging rules, and that's what we did, um, we need to focus uh, the algorithm on specific corpus. So we've chosen a large, a very large corpus, uh, the 20th century authors, because uh, the cataloging rules were well standardized and we could re really rely on it to create the work. Um, 
So again, we um, uh, we benefit a lot about the fact that the BNF is a legal deposit institution because that means that with a, we have a certain kind of um, exhaustivity of bibliographic records for work. Uh, it means that uh, we have we can think presumably that we have the older editions for each work that we are going to generate. So we have the the more um, ancient dates for the, the the work, and this is important for generating the metadata of the work. Uh, and uh, we also build uh, a highly configurable robot, uh, which eats every kind of metadata, and we handle this. Uh, robot to metadata experts who uh, enjoyed it a lot <laughs> to create their their works, and we wanted to keep it simple. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you may know that in bibliographic records you can have a lot of aggregates records. Uh, aggregates records um, are grouping um, in one document or one item several works of several people, such as an, an, an anthology, for, exam for instance. Uh, can groups uh, poems from different authors, such, such thing like that. So at the beginning of the process, we keep the aggregate record, but at some point uh, in the process, we evacuate them because it's too complicated to handle. We need them at the beginning, but then uh, we keep it for later uh, because it's too complicated for, uh, for a first run. So um, what are we doing exactly? So I'm not a data scientist, so I can't really explain you how the algorithm works. Um, please don't ask about that. <laughs> but here, what's what you, here is what, what we are doing. So we take a list of authors. Here we have, we have author one, author two, and author three. From these authors, we derived a list of uh, forms of titles. For author one, we have titles and subtitles. For author three, we have title four. Uh, author two have title two and title three. And then those forms of titles are uh, compared, each of them, uh, together. So we take the string characters, uh, we make bunches of it, uh, and we compare the bunches of the string characters. Uh, and then, based on the similarity distance, which is the Jacquard distance, uh, we calculate a distance between the titles. And based on that, uh, titles similar are grouped together to form a work. And titles not similar are um, evacuated from a cl possible cluster. So uh, you can see that uh, work one is based on uh, title one and subtitle one. They are from the same bibliographic record. So we have also a work of du uh, deduplication at the end of the algorithm, because sometimes he generates works which are derived, uh, two works which are uh, derived from the same bibliographic records, because we are clustering based on titles and not bibliographic records. So there's also a deduplication work to do. But um, it's been working quite well. And so what do we do when we have those clusters? And that's uh, when I uh, uh, tell you about the two phases of the project again. Uh, from one hand, we generate again a web page in Data BNF. So this is a new work page in Data BNF. You can see that we differentiate those new works, newly created work from the old work uh, by uh, introducing a red color. It's just to um, make uh, information to the user to say that this is not as reliable presumably as not as real, reliable than uh, uh, handcrafted work. Um, we, we, you, can, you can't see uh, it here, but there will be a link toward a web page documenting the project so that people will have explanation of what uh, we are doing and why uh, they can see that sometimes there's bullshit on those pages. Um, we also generate the data which, has, uh, which are RDF data, normal RDF data. But you can see that uh, we are not uh, attributing permanent URI to this newly created work because they are considered temporary uh, while they are not re-injected in the main catalog, uh, which means that they would have been uh, going through this validation process I've, uh, I've been telling you about. So for the moment, the identification is based on the hash key, and we also add the temp work 
uh, mentioned into the URI. Um, also, we've added uh, properties such as status of identification of the work, which make um, uh, information about the uh, provisory character of the work. And so there is a time lapse uh, in one property. Uh, I think the property name is DC terms valid date or something like that, uh, with a validation lapse. Uh, we consider that those uh, works are valid only for one month or two and then it's uh, updated and the date is changed, etc., etc. So uh, what about the workflow here? We intend to uh, process with batch uploading. So first semester of uh, 2019, we are uploading the computed works in the database NF interface. Uh, and they will, be go, they will go under validation process. Uh, so that uh, ex metadata expert will sample them and try to verify them, see if the information is okay, and eventually um, correct the, the possible problems in the generation and acting on the algorithm. The second semester of 2019 is for uploading the computed and validated works, hopefully, in the catalog. And then, finally, they will be attributed a permanent URI, and so you can see that uh, FABR logic and um, semantic web logic are going hand, hand in hand here because uh, the attribution of a permanent URI depends on the validity of the work cluster. So they're really uh, entangled process in the BNF workflow. Um, concomitantly, uh, we need to evaluate, curate the quality of the main catalog metadata. So, uh, for instance, um, we go through the algorithm, we look at the dates, and if the date is not okay, we go to the catalog and we correct it uh, batch, uh, batch with uh, massive process. For the titles, we check on content and structuration. We've been going through uh, thesis titles, which weren't structured, and that would, uh, wouldn't work in the algorithm, so we've been curating this. Uh, authors, uh, there's a lot of homonyms, and the, um, this process will help us to disambiguate. And uh, as for language, there's some still issues too. And um, yes, we need to uh, really have a good curation of those media data in order to improve the performances. Um, so what, what are we going to do now uh, after the works integration into the main catalog? Um, so eventually we want to uh, try the algorithm on non-textual works, so images, for instance, uh, prints images, um, see that we can apply a fair barrier logic to, uh, to stamps. Um, foreign works, of course, and uh, works uh, predating the 20th century. Uh, expressions uh, are gonna be a tough things to do but we feel that this is very important because expression is semantically a uh, really important aspect in the LRM FABR model. And uh, we would like to uh, benefit work uh, conducting by the other, other bibliographical agencies in France, which is the ABES, which is a bibliographical agency for a uh, research um, uh, institution. Uh, they've been uh, going uh, they've been trying to uh, compute works, but they've been uh, working with the OCLC uh, works at algorithm, and we would like to um, link to all those works, between no, our, work, our works and their works, and to compare the uh, working of the algorithm. And uh, I guess this is uh, what uh, LOD uh, is made for, <laughs> somehow. Uh, well, thank you for your attention, and... Um, uh, if some of you have questions, not about the algorithm, please. <laughs> <laughs>few eyebrows raised in the audience, I think, when you mentioned how that you were creating URIs and manage them. Uh, 
Uh, how, uh, do you have a planned life cycle for those? You'd mentioned that they were valid for one or two months and so on, but uh, can you talk a little bit more about how you plan to manage a lot of URIs? It seems like a bit of a theme now <laughs> that we have a lot of URIs that we're creating that we don't know whether we'll be keeping or have to plan their uh, obsolescence and so on. You can speak to that. Um, that's a tough question. Uh, so, I guess your question is what are we going, going to do with our temporary URI when we have switched to uh, permanent URI? Um, I guess it's, uh, it's going to be uh, something with the uh, uh, same mass property between the two would be the first solution I, uh, I think about. Uh, well, we, we already had a problem with URIs uh, in the past because um, we've changed our data model and uh, the URI, uh, URI in, in data BNF, they uh, have different suffixes. And for work entities, the, uh, firstly, the suffixes was the FRBR work at, at the end of the URI. And now it's just a JS about, a hashtag about, something like that. And so we had to shift towards those new URIs and uh, we handled it with communication. We uh, communicated about that and said, okay, for the moment, we're doing uh, all same as to, uh, from the old URIs to the new URIs. And um, uh, at some point, we're gonna delete the ancient and uh, keep it in the records so that you can still find it. But uh, the old same as is uh, it's gonna switch. Uh, and so we let, um, a time lapse uh, of, of uh, one year, one year and a half, to uh, let the users get used to the new model. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we are going to um, we are going to uh, handle the uh, manage the new uh, temporaries of the of the newly created work this way. Sounds like a good possible presentation for next year's SWIB. <laughs> Any other questions? We have just some time. No? Okay. Well, thank you again.